Hey there everybody, this is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report. And today, we're gonna be exploring an urban creek on the hunt for the northern water snake. Let's get exploring. People are naturally attracted to water. We love lake houses, beach houses, fishing, swimming, boating. Snakes are also attracted to water for a variety of reasons, and some snakes have evolved to rely on aquatic habitats for their livelihood. This often puts water snakes in direct contact with humans, which sometimes goes poorly for both species and usually results in a dead snake. In this video, I'll catch one of the most commonly encountered water snakes in the US and show you what makes them such amazing animals. Alright guys, check it out. We have a beautiful red northern water snake right here. We're going to try and get him out of this rock. Give me a second. A few moments later. There we go. Hey buddy, check it out. He's doing the defensive display and everything. Yeah, now this is a beautiful northern water snake really is absolutely gorgeous and you can see he's not extraordinarily happy no. all right everyone check out this awesome little snake now this is the northern water snake Nerodia cypedon now upon first glance a lot of you will probably think that this looks very similar to copperheads and to water moccasins and that's a fair point these do look very very similar to the two venomous species of snake that we have in the Piedmont of North Carolina. And that's on purpose. Uh, they do that so that predators are more likely to avoid them. It helps keep them safe. And especially when they feel threatened and they really start flattening out their heads and bodies, they are excellent mimics of the Agkistrodon genus. However, northern water snakes are completely harmless. These are non-venomous snakes. Now, one thing they do have is actually an anticoagulant in their saliva. Uh, and that is really, really cool. Something that's unique, I believe, to the Nerodia genus. Uh, so that anticoagulant basically just means that if you get bit by a northern water snake or most other Nerodia, you will potentially, uh, you, you will bleed more uh, than with other snakes just because that anticoagulant kind of prevents your blood from clotting as effectively as it could. Now, this little guy is definitely not a full-grown northern water snake. He's probably a foot and a half long. These can grow up to around four feet, believe it or not. That's pretty uncommon, though. I would say your average adult uh, northern water snake is going to be probably two and a half feet long, and those are pretty big snakes. Now, water snakes, also unlike terrestrial snakes, are pretty heavy body. You can see that even though he's a very short snake, he is pretty stout, and he recently came to Bermation as we're still in March right now. Uh, so this is not nearly as fat as he'll be later this year, but you can see he is relatively stockily built, even at a young size. Now water snakes are definitely one of the most commonly encountered snake in America, really. There's Nerodia, I think, in all of the lower 48 states, at least some species in Nerodia. Most states have several. The point is, water snakes are pretty much everywhere, uh, and they are probably the most commonly mistaken for venomous snakes. Now, to tell the difference between a water snake and a, and a venomous snake can be pretty tricky. One thing I like to look at is that dorsal stripe pattern. Now, you can see that this pattern uh, near the, the top half, of, or the top third of the body, you see it has very similar markings actually to a copperhead, but almost the inverse. So those stripes are thickest at the top and thinnest near the belly. But then as you transition down the length of the body, what you actually get is squares. So northern water snakes have this kind of square uh, or rectangle pattern. On the side they have rectangles, and on the dorsal part of their body, you also have a line of rectangles. Now that is very different than copperheads and cotton mouths, which have these triangular or Hershey kisses uh, or Hershey kiss shaped pattern all the way down their body. Now if for some reason you approached a snake and were close enough to see the head, 
You can see that right now, while it's not flattened out, the head is about the same size as the rest of the body. That's not a great indicator because these guys do flatten their heads out when they feel defensive. Uh, but definitely you can see that the eyes are rounded and they have round pupils. Very different than that slit or, or cat eye look that pit vipers have. Now coloration uh, varies very considerably among different individuals of this genus. This is a very red one. Usually they're a little more brown, but especially when they're older, that pattern can all but disappear. And you have basically what looks like a cotton mouth. So the best policy is just to leave them alone. Please do not think that, oh, you know, there's a big snake and it's by my dock or by my boat or by my fishing spot. Let me go kill it. Well, first of all, there's like a 90% chance it's a non-venomous snake like this one. But even if it was venomous, you going and trying to kill it is putting you at much greater risk of a bite than if you just left it alone. All snakes are very shy creatures. It will only bite defensively. And as you can see, even when being handled, this water snake is being very, very peaceful right now. Now, northern water snakes have a very important ecological niche as well. Uh, these guys make up the middle of most aquatic ecosystems. So they prey on things like minnows and frogs, occasionally smaller snakes. And this size will also prey on things like salamanders. Now these guys also have plenty of predators as non-venomous snakes. Most things that find them will eat them. Uh, these are preyed on very commonly by raccoons, opossums, large fish love to eat water snakes, and especially birds of prey uh, and herons, you will definitely see eating snakes quite commonly. And also as water snakes, they do transfer nutrients between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. So, you know, let's say a water snake eats a frog at this creek because there's lots of, there's a large frog population, then comes on to land and is eaten by a raccoon. It's just transferred energy from the aquatic ecosystem to the, to the terrestrial ecosystem. It can go the other way as well, but that is another really important aspect of these guys' ecological niche. And they really are beautiful. I mean, this one especially, just look at the red. Absolutely gorgeous little snake. Very underappreciated in my opinion. So glad we could catch this one, bring it in front of the camera. I mean, look at that belly. You won't often see this when you see them, you know, in the wild, you probably won't see the belly very often, but wow. That ventral scale pattern is absolutely stunning. All right, guys, let's get this beautiful little snake back where it belongs. Well, everyone, that's just about it for this video. Before you go, make sure to head over to Instagram and share this incredible Northern Water Snake fact sheet made by Emily Osterman from Study Echo with your friends to help spread information about the species. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more educational wildlife content coming to this channel every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.